Hey, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is Dr. from Tarot Tarot. We're going to do a quick read for you. Um, we are going to use this die to choose to give you um, messages from the Oracle decks and Tarot decks. And at the end, we're going to do um, six cards, Donna's Destiny, which I didn't shuffle. Um, and then we're going to do the all signs. If you're dealing with an Aries, if you're dealing with a Taurus, okay, um, somebody out there might be bitchy. It says, stop being bitchy. All right, so, um, and then, yeah, the all signs at the end. If any card repeats, I will point that out in case that's something you need to hear. And if any sign keeps popping up, I will point that out as well in case that's confirmation or someone you came here to hear about. Um, if you like this, feel free to hit the like button and if it resonates, whatever. And I think that's it. So let's roll. Oh, I didn't shuffle the deck of spreads. So number 20 is Healing Light Tarot. I just did that one. That's this one. Okay, so let's see what spread you get to start off with. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I want to say, for some reason, I want to say, you sexy mofos. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, just met a new acquaintance. Oh, okay. So did you meet, just meet somebody and you're curious about them? All right. These are all pre-shuffled, so I'm just going to do a good faith shuffle. And I'm doing reversals with this one. This one and Revelations are, are two decks I'm doing reversals with. All right, so five card. You got two of Pentacles. You're weighing your options. Ten of Swords. You're kind of feeling done. King of Wands. Um, not feeling passionate. What? Um, seven of Swords, but it's in reverse. That's good. Um, and then the Queen of Cups. Upright. That's good. Uh, the Justice card. All right, so things being fair and balanced. So let's see. Who are they? Okay. <sighs> now, Leo. <laughs> I like the Justice card on the bottom. I do. And I like the Queen of Cups here. I don't like the... Who they are is the Two of Pentacles. What are their intentions? The Ten of Swords. And um, what can this lead to? The King of Wands. This is somebody who likes to juggle. Um, this could say that they intend to betray you. And then this is, um, this is player for sure. King of Wands in reverse. It's, it's like the ultimate player. It's like the, you know, OG player. Like they've been, they've been a player forever, right? Um, and they might even just be some of those people that like, when things don't go their way, they're really kind of spiteful and bitter. Um, advice, what you need to know, um, be upfront, very clear about what you want, what your intentions are. Um, outcome of this advice is taken is the Queen of Cups. Now, I like that. Now, instead of this Queen of Cups focusing on the cup, which is a, usually a card of um, focusing on, you know, your self-love and, and healing, this Queen of Cups is actually offering the cup up. Because a lot, I don't, I'm not going to show you because I don't have one right here, but normally the Queen of Cups is like looking down at the cup. Like to me, that's focusing on the love they have and dealing on, you know, with their own healing and focusing on self-love to help them get over something. But this one is offering it up. So that's actually good. Um, so as long as you make it very clear to this person then actually it could turn out really well and fair and balanced. Um, all right, somebody in your life treats you like garbage. And I know this because the next spread, I just looked down to see what it is and it says, why do you treat me like shit? So it's a six card spread done with, um, and I, I assumed we were doing another spread, but it could be an Oracle deck. 15 is a spread of um, Mibramic. Oh, that's the cutest deck ever. Oh, it is the cutest deck ever. Where is it? Okay, so this deck, this is Mibramic. This is actually, I forget which card. Now, that's the thing is some of these cards, I don't remember off the top of my head what different ones are because they're not like obviously the traditional Rider Waite deck. She found um, a couple of pieces of dry cat food that were put there for the kitten. And now she's eating them loudly. <laughs> so that, that crunchy sound, that's 
snowy. She's eating. All right. Ooh. Okay. This is not. Hold on. Uh, why is that backwards? Hold on a second. I need my stuff in the correct position. All upright. Nothing backwards. Inside out. So that's interesting. The Eight of Cups is in reverse. And it was into it wanted to be seen, but it's in reverse. So this is what it looks like normally, and it's cute. I don't know what that is. Is it? A, I don't even know. It's looks almost like a dog, but it's in reverse. So this could be a card of um, coming back. So somebody's coming back, but is it somebody who treats you like crap? So let's see with the Mabramig deck. Um, Leo. You are the two of cups, so you might have something in cancer too, but you, what? Oh, okay, wait, this is your, oh, this is a soulmate for you. Okay, I always read this backwards. It says you character, your actions influence, how, how you truly feel about me, me character. And I'm like, so the way you're supposed to read this is the first one is that person, the other person, the one that treats you like crap. So it's a soulmate. And they could have something rising or Venus in Cancer. Um, their actions and influence. Okay, there's that Eight of Cups again, which is also a Pisces card. Um, so they walked away. How how they truly feel about you, the influence. They feel like you're their Ten of Cups, Leo. Why does Leo always get a good read? You all always get a good read. As opposed to, like, I think Aquarius a lot of times... Sometimes I get really good reads, but a lot of times I get real stinkers. At least I used to for the in the beginning. I think the last couple of theirs is really good. But you always get a good read. How they truly feel about you. Look at this. Ten of Cups. That's how they feel about you. All right, Leah. Um, this is you. You are the Ace of Pentacles. Um, are you the money maker, the rainmaker? You're the one that brings the money? Or... Do you just like spending money? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but uh, a lot of Leos I know, or anybody, people with heavy Leo influence do like to spend money. All right, so, but this is you. You're the money maker. Um, is this even worth it? Six of Pentacles. This is the card of things being equaled out and balanced. So, let me see something here, because the outcome of the relationship is the happy squirrel. Damn it, I forgot what that's supposed to mean. Ah! Does it say it? I can't remember if it says it in the book or not. I want to say it does, and I'm determined now, because I think I got this one other time, and I don't remember what it said. Ooh! I am going to... For you guys, I will throw vanity out the window, and I will put these stupid things on, because I want to know what the happy squirrel is. I can't remember. It's so cute, though. Here it is. Um, the Mabramic Tarot has one peculiarity, in addition to the 22 major arcana and the 56 minor arcana of traditional decks, it also has an extra card called the Happy Squirrel. Um, this card is a sort of urban legend in the world of tarot, owing its existence to an episode of The Simpsons, Lisa's Wedding, episode six or season six, episode 19. You may decide whether or not to use it, but a certainty at it certainly adds a touch of irony to the reading. The card indicates that a sense of humor and self-criticism can work miracles, and that smiling and laughter are two excellent allies when facing both the small and large problems of life. It also emphasizes, as was said during the episode of The Simpsons, that sometimes the cards are vague and mysterious. <laughs> um, so, oh damn, made my eyesight. Okay, so wait, let me see that part again. It says, uh, humor and self-criticism can work miracles, and smiling and laughter are two excellent allies when facing both the small and large problems of life. Wow, look how tiny this writing is. Yeah, I'm 52. I need readers. All right, so... Um, the outcome is a happy squirrel. Um, but it says, is it even worth it? Here's, here's the thing. This is the six of pentacles. This is a card of things being equal and balanced. Um, if things can be equal, if things can be equal and they, you make sure that they do their part and they contribute financially, um, like they should, they contribute their time, their energy, and emotionally invest, then yeah, um, it'll be worth it. And again, the justice card on the bottom of the previous 
although that was that's just, just a meta acquaintance so okay so on the bottom of the deck is the nine of wands so this is the card of still being in the fight still, you know being a little battle worn and feeling kind of oh man like i'm getting my ass kicked over here <laughs> you're still in the fight but you know you're you've taken a little bit of a beating um but it's also a card of um trust issues being cautious you know, this is the card of being cautious and sometimes having trust issues. So you or they or both of you might have trust issues. All right. What else? What else do you have? For you? I love that you all got the happy squirrel. Um, which, uh, let's do that again because it didn't pick one. All right. 29 is a Saints and Angels. That's an Oracle card. All right. So what Oracle card from this deck are we going to do for you, Leah? So, marriage. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so there's a Leo or two out there that, um, this is what you're facing. Whether or not you realize it, um, whatever you're involved in is gonna include marriage. It's gonna, it, it's destined for marriage. Unless you're already married, and then this definitely, this whole reading is about you and your marriage. Um, let's see. Me four. Oh, it's a Coley. Okay, so it's another Oracle deck. It's this one. All right, this is Chicoli. And I hope I have enough energy to do the Virgo read. I want to do three reads today. All right, you get number 14. Look at her. Look at all adorable. Look at this. She looks so laid back and relaxed too, doesn't she? Look how laid back and relaxed she looks. Adorable. Adorable. All right, so adorbs. All right, so what does it say? Where's my flipping readers? All right, so 14 is patronage. Some people have a hard time accepting what they view as charity, letting pride get in the way. Having a patron or more than one isn't the same as taking a handout. Patronage shows that what you have to give is valuable. Artists have known this for centuries, and today, crowdsourcing offers patronage to creative projects of all kinds. Shift your ideas about giving and taking, and look around for sources of support. If you are the giver rather than the recipient, be sure that your patronage isn't flavored with cond condescension. Um, the light message, be grateful, but don't grovel. The dark message is support with a lot of strings attached takes the joy out of it for everyone. Yeah, that is true. So if there's strings attached to it, you know, if someone's giving, then it's it ruins it. All right, so let's see. What else? 14. We are doing Dog's Tarot, which is this one. And... This will be the last one, and then we'll do the six cards, Donna's Destiny, and then we'll do the all signs. If you're dealing with an Aries, if you're dealing with a Taurus, yada, yada. Um, Celtic Cross. Okay. Go big or go home, I guess. All right, so it's a 10-card spread done with the Dog's Tarot. And I know I have a cheat sheet because this one is weird. Um, fire is Wands. Puppy is Page. Guardian is Night. Alpha females queen alpha males king the sea is cups sky is okay and the earth is pentacles all right that should be easy to remember but you're going to see me like translating it in my head as i'm trying to do this all right so celtic cross with the dogs magical dogs tarot <laughs> magical magic all right so <laughs> I'm just being a smartest. All right, so the chariot, two of pentacles, two of earth, which is two of pentacles. That is um, a Capricorn card. Fire guardian, that is um, knight of wands. Ooh, okay. Didn't we get... Oh, no, it was a king of wands. Okay. Um, ace of cups. Wow, even the cards are blurry. Um, Earth Puppy Man, I need to, I do need to start wearing glasses, I guess. Oh my God. Not a fan of that either. Um, 
so page of pentacles six of pentacles eight of swords where are we at ten okay so eight need two more um then we have the eight of pentacles wait did we just have yeah eight of swords eight of pentacles all right and then seven of wands okay on the bottom you have um the queen of cups okay didn't you get the yeah you did so queen of cups um that is a cancer card all right okay so where you are right now and why am i hiding it under the deck um where you are right now i'm trying to move on trying to move forward trying to have control over something um i mean you get the chariot card this is the chariot in the dog's tarot so this is you trying to move forward with something forward with your life forward i don't know in your career whatever it is um oh, the potential and the challenges so um two of pentacles well you get your the potential of the challenges is basically trying to weigh your options trying to decide you know if something is worth it um is this worth it what did um and also the seven of pentacles i didn't did you get that or was that somewhere earlier um because i want to say that's the one that chris Reck refers to as um is the juice worth the squeeze <laughs> what he what he does reads um all right so challenge you know potential and challenge basically you're going to have to weigh your options um and you you don't want the challenge to be juggling um you don't want to be juggling because that would be the challenge the knight of wands what to focus on what makes you feel passionate and happy what you true what truly makes you happy and what you feel passionate about um your past um was the ace of cups so it was a new it was a new start in love um that was the past so there was a new beginning your strengths page of pentacles um i feel like you have the ability to start you have the ability to start over um even to start with nothing and grow so you have no problem starting over um and you know just and investing so even if you don't have feel like you have a lot at the time you can start with what seems like very little and, and make things work. The near future, um, that's okay. So the six of earth is the six of pentacles. Um, that's a Taurus card. So in your near future, think something is going to be made equal or something is going to be made right. Um, there may be a, and now that I think about it, there, someone may give, um, offer some type of gift or charity in some way shape or form you may receive money or help in some way the suggested approach um well now according to this wait, okay seven suggested approach that is the seventh card i'm trying to keep these straight um so the eight of sky that's like the eight of swords but i don't quite know how the suggested approach would be for you to uh be a prisoner of your own thoughts um, as far as a suggested approach, I would say try not to be a prisoner of your own thoughts. Um, try to, to kind of come out of your head a little bit, you know, and see what's going on around you. You know, take the blindfold off. What you need to know in that position, you have the seven of earth. That's the seven of pentacles. There it is. Because I knew I saw it. Um, and this is the card I think that Chris Reck refers to as, as the juice worth the squeeze. So basically looking at see, seeing what you have, seeing how far you've come, seeing what you, you know, you've gotten out of something, seeing how it's grown, whether it's, you know, a bank account, um, a relationship, um, whatever it is, seeing how it's grown and what you've gotten out of it. Hopes and fears. You have the, the eight of um, earth, which is like the eight of pentacles. Um, are you working yourself to death? You hope that the work you put into something is going to be worth it. Um, you hope that if it's a relationship, you're hoping that they're going to put in the work as well. Your fear could be that it's just nothing but work. Um, and that's all you're going to be doing is working. So if it's a job, you may think that that's all you're ever going to do is you're going to work yourself to death. 
um, your potential future. Um, you have the seven of fire, the seven of wands. Um, that's a card a lot of times of being defensive or holding your position, fighting off the competition. In fact, that's probably, in this case, it would be fighting off the competition because look how this card depicts it. I know, the nails. Nails are short. Nails are short for guitar. All right, so I think you're going to be fighting off the, the competition in your future. At the bottom is the, um, the Queen of Cups, though. So that's, you know, having love and being able to... Actually, this is another one um, where they're looking at their cup of love. But they're seeing it. They, they see what they have. All right, so let's do six. Oh, I didn't... Oh, I went over to 20. I didn't mean to go this long, Leah. All right, so six cards, Donna's Destiny. And then we'll do the all signs. Got a little carried away. So I think we we pointed out um, Capricorn, Taurus, a lot of Earth, actually, now that I think about it. But you did get the King of Wands, right? And now there was the Eight of Cups. So you have the Eight of pentacles the eight of swords and the eight of cups a lot of eights eights are a card of um even though sixes are success i think of eights as like ultimate success eights are um like reaching the pinnacle like you know when you think of eight as in money eight is like you know um wealth so i always think of it as like you know the top Pinnacle. Even though a lot of people think of 10 as the top, I think of 8 as like the top. All right. Um, you get they miss you. Oh. Okay, so they somewhat miss you right now. And um, they were anxious to see you. And I feel like their their feelings are kind of waning a little bit. Um, but they have a wondering eye came up upright. Swipe left pass comes in um, reverse. Rehab comes in sideways, and then um, people, I think, in the past gossiped about you. They don't gossip as much right now. Um, trust issues are affecting your relationship, but that's on the side. So some, to some degree, trust issues are affecting your relationship. And if you are dealing with an Aries, wow, I didn't mean to go this far ahead. 20 minutes. That, that came really fast. <laughs> Um, all right, so Aries just wants to fight and be bossy. The Taurus um, is having a hard time making a decision. They can't decide. Um, emotions are clouding their judgment, so they're, they're just focusing on work right now. They're throwing themselves into their work. The, the Gemini is confused, but I think they're, um, they're trying to find a way through the dark and make a decision. The Cancer wants a new start. Um, they're kind of being defensive, though. I feel like they're, they're they want a new start, but they're being defensive. The um, Leo is losing sleep over this, and they're walking away. Okay, they're losing sleep over it, and they're walking away. The Virgo wants two twos. Look at that, two twos. Twos are about decisions. Um, the Virgo wants to share love with you, and they're at a crossroads. Hi, Casey. Um, the Libra. Hi, honey. The Libra is spying on you. Come on, bud. You want to go in here? Just go in here. Go on. Go on. Don't, don't pause. All right. Sorry. All right. Case, case. All right. So the Libra is spying on you, but they see you as their ten of cups. The Scorpio is a prisoner of their own thoughts, but they, um, they want to take a leap of faith with you. So they're they're all up in their head. The Sagittarius is just kind of hiding out, looking for answers. Um, and they're kind of feeling bitchy right now. Maybe they're feeling like they blame you. The Capricorn, um, <laughs> that's a Leo card. Um, they're trying to be strong. They're holding back, but they actually want to, they want to grow with you. They might even want to start a family with you. Um, the Aquarius is feeling stuck, but they, they're optimistic that it can turn around. They're also a little bit immature. Um, and then the Pisces um, is waiting to see what you're going to do. They're being stubborn and holding back. Or just or, They're just, they're holding their place. They might be greedy. I don't know. But they're just, they're kind of, um, they're just being stubborn. They're, they're stubborn and waiting to see what you're going to do. They might even try to be, they might even be waiting to try and force you to act. 
to reach out to them. So maybe that's what it might be an act. All right. So, um, Leo, hopefully this has helped. If this has provided anything, feel free to hit the like button. Thank you so much. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next week.